Hello, and welcome to Cry Havoc Wargaming, dedicated to bringing you the uncommon. For those of you who haven't met me, my name is Ron, and today we're going to do a how to play video of TT Combat's Carnival. So let's get started. Carnival is a uh, game originally came out from Vesperon Studios uh, several years ago that takes place in an alternate uh, reality where a rent has opened up above Venice and caused a number of unusual and mystical and magical things to happen in the city of uh, Venice in the 18th century. Uh, what we're going to do right now is we're going to see a game and learn a little bit about how the game mechanics work for this game through a game betwixt of the Strigoi, or the Vampire Faction, and the Patricians, or the Nobles. So let's go to the gaming table. So here is the, our little bit of Venice for today's game. Today's game is going to be out of the rule book. It is one of the Strigoi campaign. One of the brilliant things that they have done in the deluxe rule book for the game is they have a series of small campaigns which are all linked adventures for each of the factions. And this particular one is for the Strigoi. It's called Patricians where they are um, trying to infiltrate the Patricians by uh, taking a number of them down and turning some of them into vampires. It's on a 3x3 three three board. The table size can change in different games. The objective, every time a Strigoi faction character gains one life point back from the vampire attack special rule, they can take, basically suck the blood from their victims. So they get a point for doing that. The uh, patricians get four points, four victory points for each vampire they kill. Now that's not Strigoi's in general, that's any of the Strigoi that actually have vampire listed as a keyword. Some of the Strigoi are just thralls. So the games are uh, Strigoi, on the one side and the uh, patricians on the other. The uh, Strigoi are the attackers. It's supposed to be 125 ducats. In this game, ducats are what are used to for points, basically, to set up balance. Uh, I don't actually have enough painted figures that I brought with me. So we're actually playing it just under 120. We're at a, a 119, 118, somewhere in there. Here we have the Strigoi. Uh, starting with the noble Strigoi, their leader. I have two common Strigoi, uh, this lady back here and this lady right here. I have two thralls, they're right here, both of them. There's a newborn Strigoi. There's the newborn just, just Strigoi. There's a Stridge, which is a flying um, Strigoi right there. And then there's a priest Strigoi. As to the patricians, we have a noble, Venetian noble. We have three Barnabati, a foreign spy. We have a butler and a housekeeper or cook with a frying pan. So we are using agendas. And one of the, the challenging things in this particular game is that it is a secondary under agendas, which means to score points at all, they have to achieve at least one of their agendas. Uh, the agendas for the Strigoi are one person army, kill three enemy characters with a friendly character with the leader keyword. That would be the commander of the Strigoi, who is a noble Strigoi. He might be able to pull that off. Following orders, use two command abilities in a single round. And scouting the land. Scouting the land is a bit more of a challenge. You have to have three friendly characters at least six inches above the ground level on any point of the board outside of your deployment zone. The agenda that the uh, patricians have, they have Blood Frenzy, kill three enemy characters with any number of friendly characters with the henchman keyword. Uh, they do almost the whole patrician side are henchmen. Um, so anybody but their leader can do that. No Mercy, cause at least eight points of damage to an enemy character during a single activation. That will be a challenge, I think. And lastly, don't let them hide. Kill an enemy character while they are in cover. I should mention uh, these agenda cards that I'm using. Um, the agendas, you don't need the cards. They're right in the, the rule book. You can roll using uh, percentile dice to determine um, 
what the agendas are going to be. But um, I just, I really love the quality and the look of these cards. And really, just one more of the things that really adds to the uh, look and overall feel of this game, which is what it is certainly rich in. The patricians have uh, won the initiative, well, not the initiative role, but the determining what side of the table they're going to come in on. Uh, they've chosen this side here, which leaves the Strigoi here, but the Strigoi have uh, started to come on first. They've already put their first figure, a Thrall, right there. The patricians have put a Barnabody here, and now we go to put the Strigoi second figure down. The deployment zones are uh, within eight inches of their table edges, uh, though no higher than three inches. I'm going to put a common Strigoi out with that one uh, fall there. I'll put the new guy here. Another Barnabody over here. I will put the big boss over here. Yeah. That's the noble Strigoi. The Venetian spy over here. I'll add a thrall to give a little support to my Strigoi here. I think I'm going to try to really muscle through over here, so I will put the noble himself, uh, common Strigoi. I'll add a butler, just because I think he should stay with his boss. And the priest, I could put pretty much anywhere. I don't remember what the priest does. I'll put him with the common. What the heck, we'll go with a hole. On a Bodhi team here. We'll put her here. And we'll give them a servant too, because nobles without servants, that's just not, not a good idea. The first thing to do is to determine the um, initiative for the game. So we're going to roll a certain number of dice based on our, uh, our command. So that's four for the nobles. This is going to be the important here. It was the first time we've done a roll in the game. Whenever you're doing a roll, he, his command is four, so he gets four dice. So there's three of these colored dice, and there's always going to be one of the white dice, white in the particular set that I'm using. The white die is a destiny die, and this die is used to determine um, critical successes or failures. The goal is to roll successes. Success in most roles, there's going to be some exceptions you'll find as we go through the game. But normally a success is going to be a seven. Or that's what we call an ace in a non-opposed non role. So anytime I roll over seven, it's a success. If I roll a ten on the white die, which is going to be the little dragon, or a little lion, the lion of San Marco, um, as long as that has the drag, uh, the, is a 10, as long as one, at least one of these others, like in this case, that one, as long as it doesn't have to be a critical, uh, it doesn't have to be a 10, but as long as I have one success on the normal dice and a success on, uh, a 10 on this destiny dice, that is a critical success. It increases the advantages. Um, it still counts as an ace. So if this had been my roll and I was looking for sevens, this would be a critical success and two aces. That'll make more sense as we actually do some rolls. You'll, you'll hear, figure out how that works. On the other hand, if this had been under seven and this was a one, that would be a fumble or in other games, a critical failure, the worst of that. Um, but there has to be no successes on the blue and the one on the white. If there was a single success over here, that would be one ace and it would not be a, a fumble. Two aces. Two aces for the um, nobles, so they're going to start first. So we have to determine who we're going to activate to start. The game is going to alternate. You'll see that pretty quick. The game is going to alternate back and forth. 
uh, one figure at a time, like most modern games. I'm going to go ahead and op uh, activate one of the Barnabody. The Barnabody have a move of four. When you activate them, they get a certain number of actions based on the actions listed on their card. A Barnabody has two. The actions are the move, jump, you can uh, close in the melee or charge. Uh, a bunch of these guys can shoot. You can jump, swim, climb, a number of things. I think we're going to move, move. Okay, that would be seven. She can move one more. Let's just do that for eight. The Strig has a dex of four. I don't think I want to fly too far. I think we're going to fly over here. That's two successes. The move is four. That was kind of a pointless thing to do. Well, I guess I can go fly this way, though. Uh, Strig has two, so let's go ahead and move both. And I'll put the Strig. So the Strig flew over the water onto the bridge, cutting the corner, sort of, just a little. Now we go back to the Patricians. You don't have to roll for normal movements, which is what I'm mostly doing for these guys over here right now. It's when you do things like jump around like a crazy person. We'll see some of that. Move the other Barnabody. Start getting into position here, I think. All right, the vampire is going to do some tricky stuff. This is the uh, noble vampire. He's got a dexterity of five. And what he's going to do is he's going to jump. Show you some of this tricky stuff they can do. I'm going to try to get over to this building is what I want to do. So I'm going to do that by jumping to this point of the rail. That's, uh, that's only four inches. I have two successes. So that means I move two inches plus two free, that's four inches. That just gets me there. Now, because that is an obstacle, that rail, and he can't stand on there. In one activation, you can do uh, one um, chain jump. So he can jump from there, and we're going to try to jump onto the sidewalk here. Uh, I could have actually rolled. He has acrobats. He can re-roll two dice, which I'm going to do. You can't ever re-roll the destiny dice when, when that happens. So that destiny is going to be a failure no matter what. I have one success. Uh, I now have two successes, so that's going to be another four inches, which is enough. So he goes boink, boink to here, and he still can uh, like to climb up here. So we could try to climb. Now, he's got to make it all the way up to do this because he's been, uh, he's already taken one action, he doesn't have two actions. He has to end the turn. Oh, he probably has three. He does. He has three actions. So he has to end on a flat surface. He can't end his turn floating in the air. Um, but he's got two actions left, so he should be able to make this. So first we're going to do the climb upwards. Uh, only one success. So he makes it in one turn. So he still has one action left he could do. So he can move here to two and then try to climb that building. Well, I could have re-rolled again too there, couldn't I have? I need to remember my re-rolls. I guess it doesn't really matter in this case. So he's got four. So he gets up to here. So that's him done. He's moved forward, climbed up on top of the building. Got a good view, and he's. Uh, I'm now one third closer towards meeting one of my objectives. We'll go ahead and just move this patrician. I guess I'll move my thrall. He'll go over this way. Let's see the cook. She'll move over here with them. Common boys for. Do they do anything cool? No, oh, two actions. Uh, 
Let's see, the Venetian spy. I think it's time to start doing stuff. She moves four. Her range is 12. Oh, but there's a Strigoi right there. Maybe I just want to shoot the Strigoi. No, out of range. I'd have to move. But we can do that. Move here. And we'll shoot a Strigoi. So here's our first shooting attack. Her attack is four. She has... Uh, Expert mark, marksmanship. Oh, she has infiltration. She could have started anywhere. She has uh, marksmanship too, so she can re-roll two of her dice. She's got an attack of four. Now, on a uh, attack, the um, target number is now going to be the dex of your target. In this case, that's going to be four. She's shooting at that the strig on the bridge. Four is the hit. Come on. There. One, two, three. Four. Wow. She could be rolled too, but she doesn't need to. All four of those are hits. So, four hits. The weapon, let's see what mods it has on here. Should have been three is the hit, so even better. It does all hit anyway. There's a negative one evade. Uh, damage is plus one, so that counts as five hits. All right, so uh, she hits for five. The penetration on that weapon is um, is two, so it's going to reduce the protection roll by two, um, and the protection is only three as it is. So we roll for that. We get two successes, but those get both. Oh, all right, so the Penetration takes those both off, so that is five hits on the Strig. The Sturge has been hit by the Venetian Spy pretty hard, hit for five points. Um, that's half of what she has available. Butler has a pistol with a reduced shooting. Two aces, so that's going to be four. I don't make it to that, but I do make it to the boat. So we'll we'll jump onto the boat. Oh, I could have re-rolled one. Let's actually re-roll one. Nope. So we jump to the boat. We get a free chain reaction. I guess we will. This is riskier. I guess I'll try to jump to the next. No successes at all. I don't need them actually. That gives me one. That gives me three inches. I only needed the two. So jump here, free jump to there. Then for my last action, this is an actual activation, not a chain jump. I'm going to try to jump onto those barrels. I think I can stay on those barrels. One, two, three, four. I'm going to go ahead and roll the extra one just because I can. I got five inches, so that's seven inches. So, the Strigoi jumps all the way over to these. And we'll move the boss. He's also got a pistol, which is useful. Gonna be useful soon. He comes here, he could move up closer, but I don't think I wanna get too far in. Not right now. We have the Thrall. Thrall moves at four. And the Thrall is armed with a crossbow. So, eh, probably not actually. We'll come up there. The newborn has five. What he flips along pretty crazily. He's there. And that is the end of turn one. So it takes us into turn two. And we have to roll for initiative again. Five for the uh, vampires, and four for the patricians. Patricians have two successes, 
and the vampires have three. So the vampires get to go first. First thing, this vampire is going to try to fly into combat. Can you fly into action with the Venetian spy, I think. So uh, this is only a dexterity of four, not acrobatic. Okay, so that's going to be success because it five. So here, and the second one, also success. That's going to give into the close combat for an attack. This is an attack. This is a physical attack. This is the first one of these we've had. Uh, so you're going to compare the attack score for the Strigoi. Uh, that is four. Uh, also has vampiric attack, which is going to mean she can heal by the, uh, by the damage she does. The, uh, the target number is going to be the dexterity of the opponent. In this case, it is a Venetian spy. So the spy has uh, dexterity is four. It's going to be the four dice, looking for fours. It's three hits. So it's three hits on to the, um, the spy. Uh, the spy goes and defends itself by rolling its protection score. Her protection is four. Uh, there's no modifiers. There's often modifiers on this roll, but in this case there is not. So she rolls four, and she needs sevens, the usual success number in this game. Ooh, not good. That is not a single save. I just hit that. So that's four points of damage. So what that means, because of the vampiric attack, the Sturge gets five points back. I think I'm going to charge in with the Noble. He's going to attack with his Rapier, which does uh, negative to damage. He's got an attack of five. So he's going to roll five dice. He's looking to beat. The Sturge's dex, which is four, he's going to try to drop that Sturge. So he has to move first. That was his first action. Now he gets a free attack because he's just close. So this one doesn't count as an action. And that is two hits. Two hits on the Sturge. The Sturge defends with three. Negative one. Negative one to protection. So one of these protections is just going to disappear. And he needs sevens. He's got none. Because that was a free attack, the boss guy there still has two more actions. Uh, he has three actions, so he's going to do that again. So he hits again. This time he only gets one hit. And one of those will disappear, like I said, because but he had two, that's all he needed. So it doesn't take any hits that second time. And this is the last one of these. Looking for fours. It's got two, three, three hits, four hits. He's gonna, gonna take some, there's nothing he can do. He managed to get one hit, that disappears. So he takes the four hits. Uh, so now he's down to two. Okay, the first thing I think I'll do is I'm gonna move the thrall up here. And then she's going to fire at the uh, Venetian noble with her crossbow. His defense is five. He's looking for fives. Got one hit. I think that's a five. Two hits. The butler is going to shoot at that Strigoi. He's got a pistol. His attack is definitely three. And needs fives to hit. That's two hits. Common Strigoi's protection is four. The gun might do something to that. Uh, needs sevens. No. So this Strigoi is going to try to leap over to him. Uh, actually leap to this boat first. So we'll roll up here. One hit there, so that's going to be three inches. That's not great. Oh, except that's acrobat one, so I can reroll one. Still not great. Jump to the boat. 
uh, was to increase the chances of that. So jump here, we're gonna chain jump onto the shore towards the uh, butler. That one was caught. Uh, really bad rolls here. I can re-roll one. Okay, that was a success. So that's gonna make us three inches, uh, which means I don't quite get to him, but that was only the one action. So close for the second action and attack. Common Strigoi is going to attack. So she walks up here, she attack is on him. Her attack is four. Uh, oh, his, uh, his defense or dexterity is four, so the target number is four. Uh, so it's one, two, three, four hits. Four hits. Uh, this is just fangs. The protection is four, but these need sevens. Okay, one, two, th uh, three. Three hits, so only one of those gets through. So he takes one point, uh, she gets one point back. Their turn. I think we'll go ahead and activate the spy. Who's going to try to uh, drop that Sturge? So, Three hits. One hit. Sturge takes one hit. So with that in mind, I'm going to activate the newborn Stroy. I can't get to anybody. No, he can almost get there. So he's going to come into there. He moves like nobody's business. Everybody here has been activated. So we have a small issue. I'm not sure how this is going to work out. I lost all the footage on the right side of the, the board. So so the last move was, um, I believe, was over uh, here uh, with the Strigoi, the newborn Strigoi. So we go over to the Patricians on the other side of the, of the board there. So I'm going to go ahead and move the Barnabody up into that action with the common Strigoi on the bridge. Uh, the uh, common Barnabodies move four. Got two actions. So she can't, he can't quite get into the fight, but he can at least get over there. I can on the other hand, goes to the Strigois and the Strigois will move the uh, Strigoi priest who moves five. He can actually get into them. So he'll do that. <clears throat> Gets to her. He's going to attack her for the free action for having closed. His, um, his attack is four. Barnabody's defense. Uh, dexterity is four. So we need fours. That's a success. Two successes. He gets her for two successes. Her uh, protection is four. Uh, that is two successes, so she stops those. No damage done. But that was a free action, uh, so he still has another action. So he's gonna go ahead and attack her a second time, needing fours. He's got two hits. She's gonna try to resist those. And she does. She got three successes. So nothing there. Uh, then we go to the uh, patricians. There is only one patrician left who hasn't activated, and that is the uh, cook. So I don't really have a lot of places to go right now. Well, we'll at least get her over there. She can't get quite there anyway, so we'll put her there. And that leaves us with the thrall who can at least get up into the fight here. Move to, move, move into the fight there. There are no more patricians. 
but there is one more strigoi. Now I'm going to move two inches here, and I'm going to try to jump that distance. He has got a dexterity of five. He's also acrobatic too, so he can roll two of these dice. And that's good because he only has one success. He has two successes, so that's four inches. That may not be enough. Yeah. Yeah, that is not enough. Um, so, this is a fall. Um, falls are always going to be from the highest height. It's not like from where he drops off. It's going to be from where he starts the fall. So it's going to be from where he's at right now. I did not spend, which I should have, uh, I didn't spend the time to do the, um, I could have done a safe uh, controlled landing, which is a, a security measure uh, in, before you do a maneuver like this. Falling. Uh, this is a dexterity roll. He needs sevens for aces. Again, he has fives and he can re-roll two because of acrobatics. No, not good at all. He's got one success. Uh, following one success. Uh, reduce life points lost by one for each ace. Um, that's going to be based on the distance he's falling. Which is nine inches into the water. So the life points for a fall are equal to the distance fallen um, in most cases, but I just made that so that it would have been nine inches. It should have been nine. His successful roll reduces it uh, by one, so it's going to be eight. That still, that still hurts. Uh, however, he's falling into water, so that reduces it by two. So he's, he's going to receive six points of damage for his fall into the water here. That's not particularly good, but he can live. Now, that was uh, his first action. So, for his second action, we will um, we'll climb up this building. So, again, he's five, acrobatic, two. One, oops, that was a seven. Uh, one, two, three. That's three successes on a climb. So he can move his full. That's going to get him up to the first floor. Uh, there's a little balcony on this side of the building. It gets him up to that. But we're going to go ahead and use his third movement to get onto the roof. Or at least that's the plan. Uh, and we get it. So he's actually onto this roof. So we begin uh, with um, having to roll for initiatives. We've got five for the Strigoi. And if I get the initiative here, I can save the Sturge. Otherwise, the Sturge is dead. Um, I only have two successes. That's not a great start. Uh, one, two, three, four. And it is four for the Patricians. Um, that was probably out of camera, but that's two and two. So it's a tie. A one for the uh, Patricians. That is cocked. Well, it doesn't matter. There's three, three successes even without it. So it is the Patricians first. So the first action we're going to do is the Sturge. The Sturge, I'm going to move that building so we can see the Sturge. I think the Sturge is visible now. It's right here. So you can see the Sturge is in, in a fight there with a number of opponents. I'm going to activate first to do an attack on the Spy. Uh, the Sturge attacks. Um, the Sturge is nearly dead, which is what the issue is here, which is why I needed to activate the Sturge fast uh, first. She's only got one point. If she can successfully do damage to one of them, though, she can get some of her points back with her vampiric uh, attack. So uh, attack is four. And where the uh, spy is dexterity four. So four is the target number. Uh, one, two, three. That's three successes. Uh, so that's three successes. Spy protection is four. These go for the standard uh, sevens. One. Three hits, so that's two, two get through. So the Sturge heals by two points. The Spy loses two points. Spies down to five. Spies a little beat up. 
Now, this is going to be a little tricky, a little dangerous, because we are in a fight. The Sturge is going to try to move out of that fight. That's perfectly allowable, but included in her uh, role, she's going to do a flight. But she's going to have to do a roll for her disengagement. And what that can do, if she doesn't succeed this roll, is it can give the opponents a, uh, an attack on her. So this is an opposed dexterity roll. What that means is you're rolling against your individual, both sides dex roll their dexterities, sevens or an ace, and it go it's going to go to whoever has the highest number. The Sturge has uh, four dexterity. So that is only the one. So the Venetian noble's dexterity is five. One, two, three, four, five. Only has to beat that one. That seems likely to me. Uh, no, tied. Which means that's going to be an attack on the Sturge. This is a five. It's also, Sturge is almost certainly not going to survive this. So you can re-roll two of those. That's four hits. Four hits of his weapon. Uh, she made two, but that stops one. Three get through. She only had one hit point. She is down. What we're going to do is close that same noble, since he's doing so well. He's going to close one action to close with the newborn Sergoy. And now he's going to attack the newborn. So again, this is fives. Gets to re-roll. Oh, I didn't check to see what the dexterity was. Sergoy's... Uh, Dexterity is four. Uh, so one, two, that's three hits already. You cannot re-roll the destiny dice. So there's only one he can re-roll and he doesn't get a success on that. So that's gonna be, he's got three possible hits. Uh, Strigoi, um, his protection is only three. He needs sevens to stop that. He does stop two, so he takes one point. Not that big a deal. On the other hand, that's only the first. We're going to take a second action to do that again. Our third action, I should know. That would have been free for the closing. So this is the second action. Ooh, lousy roll. But he can re-roll two of those. Uh, that's going to give two more hits. So again, it's three hits. Possible three hits. The newborn tries to fight him off. He gets none of them. So he takes three points. And now for the third activation. Goes after the newborn again. Four, I can reroll that. Five. Uh, five. He goes to try to stop that. Uh, wow, he does stop two of them, but that still takes three. I'm going to spend a command point for one more activation. I wouldn't normally have done that. I don't, I don't want to waste command points. I, I'm, I'm always a little bit nervous about using command points too early and unnecessarily, but a command point can be used to give you an extra action. If he does one more hit point to this Strigoi, he will have met one of his agendas of doing eight points to A in a single activation. So the only way to do that is to take an extra action in this activation where he's going to lose that opportunity that he's on the verge of doing. So we're going to go ahead and spend the uh, command point for that and give him four. Activation. I think there's a rule that, that makes that the maximum you can ever do anyway. Uh, okay, so almost a perfect roll, and he gets re-roll two, so it could be a perfect roll, but it is not. There's three points. Uh, we roll to see if those get stopped. One of them does, but that's still two points in. The newborn Sergoy is nearly dead, but more importantly, uh, one of the agendas has just been accomplished by the uh, patricians. That, that was an important loss. Uh, I'm going to activate that Strigoi now because he can, if he's successful in attacking, he can get some of those points back. He's not as good a fighter, though, as his opponent. Um, so he's only got four dice. I'm pretty sure the uh, noble Strigoi is defense uh, deck 35. Uh, that's only one hit, and he does not get to re-roll. He can force him to re-roll that one success. Uh, and it worked. 
no hits. Uh, that was the first activation, though. That's uh, So he has two, so he can still take another one. So we'll go ahead and do that. Again, only one hit. Perry. <laughs> no hits. All right. He's not, not going to be able to take that guy out. And it is the um, patrician's turn. I think the patricians should probably have the butler shoot the... Uh, Commons to Groy that his attack is three, I think. These cards I have, I'm afraid, are really hard to read. Uh, Strigoi has uh, dex 35. That's two hits. So the Strigoi's uh, protection. This is a common Strigoi. Protection is four. Um, that's three saves, so... Uh, that's all right. Uh, however, that was only the first action, so... Oh, but he has to reload. Uh, so he's reloading really quickly with a with a vampire in his face. I'm going to go ahead and activate Major Strigoi on the roof. He's going to walk to here. And then he's going to do a jump. Okay, I can spend two AP for the jump. He's a, he's a leader, so he's got three AP. He's only just used one. I could use two for the jump, which will give me controlled landing in case I mess up the jump. I'm going to get a free attack when I land anyway, and I'm going to get it at a plus five. However, I get two attacks if I don't do that. And he's really acrobatic, so he's likely to make this successfully anyway. I'm going to go ahead and try to not have to do the controlled jump. And there's a dex 5 and an acrobatic 2, so I get to re-roll two of the dice anyway. Okay. Hmm, maybe I should have taken it. Yeah. Well, at least it's not a critical failure. So he's going to move for two inches. <laughs> and fall for six. This time it is uh, not on water, so he's not going to have that advantage. Uh, it's a dexterity roll. That's five. Looking for sevens. He's acrobatic, so he can re-roll two. All of them successes. Uh, what does that mean? Five on a fall. Uh, reduce life points by one for each ace. Would have been six. That makes it one. Uh, so he lands behind uh, his target. He takes one point of damage. That's not that big a deal, particularly since he's about to get it back. He gets a free attack. An attack of opportunity is the official name of that roll. Um, but there's also, let's see, the penetration. That's what increases. The penetration is five plus, I think. His attack is six. He's expert offense two, so he can reroll two. It is against a um, dexterity of five. So five is the target number. There's only three hits there, but he gets a reroll again. Uh, and does get two more hits there. So five hits uh, with a plus five to the penetration. That's not likely to stop those. Uh, his penetration is normally three, no stops. So those all go through. That's five points. He gets a second attack. Two hits there. He rolls two for expert defense. Still doesn't hit. One, two, three, three hits. His protection is four. Uh, he stops one of them, so three hits. He is in a bad way. And that's it for the uh, Noble Strigoi's turn. I think the uh, Venetian spy here is going to try to shoot that spy. Um, unlike most games, they don't consider this melee. This is just base-to-base -base contact. So there's no rule against shooting into it. Um, and we're going to go ahead and take opportunity of that lack of rule to try to shoot that. She's got... A marksman too, so she can re-roll two of these. She'd have to reload first, because her gun is empty right now. So her first action is to reload, and then her second action is going to be to fire. Uh, her attack is four. Uh, there's an evade of one, so it lowers the defense number. It's going to be four instead of five. It's got plus to the damage, and it's got a plus to the uh, penetration. So she rolls first to hit. She needs fours because of the, uh, the gun's ability. So only one misses, but 
She has expert marksman, so she can re-roll that. Still a mess. So three hits. Uh, because of the plus to the damage, it's going to count as four hits. Noble Strigoi's protection is four. Uh, there's a negative two to this, so two of these aren't going to count. Two of his successes will not count if he gets them. He only gets one, uh, so that doesn't count. So one, what do they say, one, two, three. Three points get through, and he is wounded again, and it is the Strigoi's turn. The common Strigoi here is going to attack the butler. Uh, she's got fives. It's probably fours to hit. Four hits. His penetration, or his protection, is four. Ooh, all four get through. That's not good. Uh, that butler is dead. Their turn. We're going to go to the fight over on the bridge now, since everything on this side is activated. Uh, I guess the Barna body that's in a heck of a lot of trouble there should probably go first. Uh, so Barna body's uh, got a four plus one to damage. A common Strigoi. Common Strigoi's uh, dexterities are five, so the target's number is five. Uh, one, two, three hits. The um, protection is four. Um, so that'll be five. Three get through. Uh, but the common Strigoi can fight back, uh, which she will do. Um, she's going to attack that same Barna body. Attack is four. Barna body's dexterity is probably four, yep. Expert offense one, so you can re-roll one of these. Um, unfortunately, the only one that failed was destiny, and you can't re-roll the destiny. So three hits. Protection is four. So those are no, so she hits all four to that Barna body. The Barna body is going to close with the priest. He's got four. Uh, the priest, Shergoi priest is a little bit better than the others, but this part's the same. So fours, four needing fours. That's three. Did he have expert defense? He does. Expert defense one. And that gives him four. The uh, Strigoi priest, protection's only two. He stops one, but takes the other one. So he's been hit. He's shot. She can either reload or attack without her dagger. <coughs> I think what she's going to do is attack with the dagger. Um, so she, re she attacks that Strigoi a second time. Can re-roll. And she gets three hits. The common, uh, common Strigoi uh, rolls to try to stop those. And gets all three. Takes, takes all three is what I mean. Uh, did not make the roll. Uh, now the other Bar Barna body is going to take a second stab for his second action to the priest. He needs fours. He would have been able to re-roll, but there's nothing. He can't re-roll the destiny die. This guy only has three protection. He's not... Oh, wow. That is a critical success. That is a critical success because I have a 10 on the destiny die. Uh, and then I have uh, another success. In fact, both of my other dice were success. So one, two, three, four. Um, and I only took three. So he takes no damage from that second attack. Now it's his attack. He's fighting back. His attack is four. He's attacking that partition that's right in front of him, the Barna body that just stabbed at him. He does not have expert attack. So, uh, but these are all, all hits. One, two, three, four. Four hits. He's going to roll the Barna body for his defense, his protection roll. And he only stops one. So that Barna body takes three. A moment ago, my Barna bodies were completely unhit. And now they're a little, a little more beat up. Uh, that was his first attack, his second attack on that same Barna body. Uh, that's uh, three hits. 
Barnard body could stop those. Uh, stops one, still takes two. All right, those are his two attacks. It is the patrician's turn. And things are pretty crowded over there. All right, um, so I have a third Barnard body over there. Doesn't have line of sight. I can't get him into anything over there. I could move him, move him onto the boat and reload his pistol. I think that's the best thing to do there. Oh, you know what the Thrall can do? <laughs> Probably can't pull this off, but I'm going to try. Uh, instead of making that move, I'm going to try to jump to this obstacle. But these guys aren't the miraculous movers that the vampires are. The Thralls are, you know, just um, familiars. Okay, that's two aces, though. So that's going to give him four inches. Uh, that definitely makes it to that first jump. He gets a free chain jump. This is where I wanted that roll, actually. But I got three anyway, so that's five. Yeah. Boing, boing, just what he wanted to do. That's one action. He still has another action, and he gets a free opportunity attack. The Thrall is going to swing that shovel and swing it hard. His attack is three. Okay, he's not swinging it that hard. Barnabas are four. Uh, that's two hits. Uh, Barnabody, I think, is a three protection. Yep, no, four. That's what I meant, though. Uh, stops both of them. All right, so the first attack, nothing hits. Second one, uh, he gets one in. Let's see if the Barnabody stops it. He should. The Barnabody should be better, and he certainly does. Uh, in this case, when I was talking about the strength level, the Thralls are basically the Strigoi's bottom level guys. So uh, none of those hit, and they're rocking on the boat in the canal. Good thing there's no Rashar. So we have to roll for initiative. I have used a command point with my, uh, no, uh, the patricians have used a command point. The Strigoi have not, uh, and the Strigoi have rolled three. They have three successes. The, um, the patricians are down one. Uh, and they only have one. So, initiative goes to the Strigoi. I'm going to activate my noble Strigoi first, and I'm going to close with the spy. I get an attack of opportunity. His attack is five. He has uh, expert defense two, so he gets to reroll twice. The spy's def uh, dexterity is four. So my targets are fours. I have three hits so far. I get to reroll two for the expert. I have five. Her penetration or protection is four. Uh, she stops one. So she takes four hits. She is almost dead. All right, well, he takes this. Uh, that was a free attack of opportunity. So he takes his second attack. We roll one. Uh, that is five hits. She's not going to be able to make this because she, uh, well, if she had a critical, she could have stopped it, but she doesn't. She actually does stop three, though. That's not bad, but she still takes two, and she only has one. That takes her out. Oh, I've been shortcutting myself a die. He's got six dice, not five. And the boss has probably got fives for dex, yeah. Oh, uh, so that's a hit. Oh yeah, I'm certainly not gonna drop them with rolls like that. Oh, that's not as bad as I thought. Only two dice failed, and I can re-roll those. And now they all hit. So that's six hits. His protection, Oh, and he has parry, so he can try to get rid of one of those. Uh, but still a success. All right, so he only stops one. That's four hits. That's nice, uh, but that ain't going to drop him. So I will not be able to achieve that agenda. There's no way I can do it now. Uh, that was the only character who could possibly have done this. 
that doesn't mean I can't still uh, succeed. I have other agendas I can make. It just means I'm not doing that one. And he's fully back up to health now, too. Uh, okay. Um, and that's the end of his turn. So Patricia's going to go. I think he should go. Who does he attack? He can either attack my noble Strigoi. I think that's the wrong move. If this wasn't the last turn of the game, that would be the smart move. But it is the last turn of the game. That Strigoi is never doing anything again. The, common, the uh, newborn Strigoi he's fighting, though, is nearly dead. If he kills him, he gets four points. So I think the thing to do is to go ahead and attack the newborn Strigoi. Uh, so his uh, attack is five uh, against fours. He can reroll one of those. All right, so that's four hits. Uh, the newborn Strigoi's uh, protection is only three. Uh, so he takes all four of those hits, which kills him, uh, which is why I said that was worthwhile, because that's, that's four points right there. And this is four real points. There's no debate. They already have met an agenda. Another character down on my side. I'm going to uh, try to climb with the um, common Strigoi. Five decks, acrobatic one. Wow, uh, that was very close to being a critical failure. All right, so it's only a three inch climb. Um, so she's working her way up the wall. First uh, turn, she only makes it three inches. And her second activation, she's got to clear three inches or she's in trouble. Uh, and she's not going to clear it with that. Well, she can reroll one. That's going to do it. That's four inches. So, yeah, she's up here. That gives me two having done that. All right, so the Barnabody, uh, that's the highest up there, is going to attack that common Strigoi in front of her, uh, as she likes to do. Uh, she's got a four. Uh, the uh, common Strigois have five, so target is a five. They do have a extra, uh, extra defense one. One, two, three, four. So it gives her four hits. Protection of a common Strigoi is four. Uh, stops one, that's three hits. Don't even need to use the second attack. Uh, that's a problem because I was going to try to use that one to get up on a building. I'm going to try to kill the Barna body on the boat. Um, so that Thrall is going to swing his almighty swinginess. Uh, his attack is a amazing three. Uh, Barna bodies are fours. Uh, whoa, three hits. I'm not going to laugh at that. Uh, Barna bodies also have a defense of four, a protection of four. Uh, stops two of them. Uh, so that's two hits on that Barna body. Uh, that Barna body is going to go and try to kill that Thrall to finally get rid of him once and for all. Uh, his attack is four. Uh, he can actually shoot him, which would mean that this is a uh, only a twos needed. And he has expert. Well, that would be a, a marksman, not a fence. If he's shooting, uh, but still, three hits. He only saves on three, and he's actually got a negative one already. Uh, so none. That's all four because he's going to take a second action. Actually, the Thrall should have taken a second action. Um, that's uh, three hits. Uh, stops one, that would be two. So he's nearly dead. Uh, the Strigoi's uh, other turn. Um, I will go ahead and move the priest. He'll fight that. Yeah, he'll fight the Barnabody in front of him. His attack is four. Barnabody's uh, a four. Uh, does he have? He does not, so he doesn't get to re-roll anything. Uh, so that's two hits. No 
no saves. So the burner buddy there takes two. His second attack. Uh, that's two. And that's one. Um, that Brian body is going to try to kill that priest. Dex is four. Target number is four. That is a critical. Um, and he gets to reroll a die. Uh, okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Six points. Priests. Protection is only two. Um, he does stop two of them, but that's not going to do much. Two, three, four, five, six. Uh, he still takes four. Of course, he was completely healed up, so there is that. I'm going to attempt to jump to this obstacle here. Uh, but this is only a thrall. Thralls aren't great at this. Um, But that'll work. Uh, okay, so John starts two inches. You get an extra inch for each uh, ace. One, two, three, four aces. Um, so that's six inches. I can jump all the way to here. I'm going to climb. I'm going to try to climb. This is riskier. Uh, one, two. Uh, that's only two. Four, that would take me up four inches, leave me in the window. That would normally be the end of her turn, but I'm going to expend. I don't need him anymore anyway. I'm going to expend a command point to give her an extra action. And one, two, let's see, four, oh, just barely. Bingo, bango. That gives me my agenda. There we have it, a Strigoi victory. The truth is, I feel like the Strigoi might be a little unbalanced in this scenario. It was certainly unbalanced in their favor um, with the uh, points per life points brought back onto themselves. Uh, but I hope that gave you a good idea of how the game flows and, and how it works. An introduction to two of the factions, uh, not basic factions that come with the starter kit, but nonetheless, uh, the Strigoi and the Patricians. If you have any questions about the game, uh, go ahead and ask those in the comments down below, or if you already play the game and you have comments you'd like to make or, or corrections you'd like to point out, go ahead and do that in the comments down below as well. We also look to you for comments on further ideas for content that you would like to see presented here on Cry Havoc Wargaming. So go ahead and put those in the comments down below as well. If you've enjoyed this video, uh, then please hit like. And if you'd like to receive further notification of other videos like this to help you determine how to better spend your time or money in your wargaming hobby, then please hit subscribe. Until next time, cheers.